How's it going everyone? It's Sam. Merry Christmas Eve Eve and happy holidays. Hope you're all doing well. Today we are going to look at the Fed's preferred metric for inflation. It just came in today and it came in lower than expected. Also going to talk about Elon Musk. A pretty interesting interview that he gave. Just going to give some of the bullet points of that and also going to talk about today's show sponsor and then give a 2023 outlook for Bitcoin. Now I'll put timestamps underneath the video in case you want to skip around. I would highly suggest staying through to the end. Also, uh, there are links underneath the video to the today's show sponsor and also to Moomoo in case you want some free stocks around the holidays. It's not too bad. Just deposit $100. So let's take a look at what just happened. So we had the Fed's preferred inflation metric come in today and it was lower uh, than last month significantly. So we had the PCE, or Personal Consumption Expenditure Price Index, come in, and it rose 5.5% in November from a year earlier, but only 1% or 0.1% from October. So we have an annual rate of 1.2% from this last month that we had. And then we also had, uh, it actually revised from last month. It was 6% last month annually, but it got revised up to 6.1%. So a little bit of a revision up there, but we had a really good rate come in this month. Uh, we dropped a 0.7 and got a 0.1. The core PC came in at 4.7% or 0.2% on a monthly basis, which is what was expected. So this is positive. We continue to see inflation come down. This is the, F the Fed's preferred metric, which obviously is pretty uh, bullish for the market, but the markets aren't really moving up on this maybe for a variety of different reasons. Maybe it was because of last month's getting revised up. Maybe it's still because of GDP yesterday getting revised up. That's, I think, why we had such a big down day yesterday. But now the market's just kind of back and forth, probably low volume as well going into the holidays. Now, Elon Musk just did a Twitter Spaces last night, jumped on, and he said a, a lot of interesting stuff. It was probably uh, one of the most in insightful Twitter spaces that we've seen from him in a while. He says that he thinks the recession that we're going into could be comparable to 2009, maybe a little bit better, maybe a little bit worse. He says that they may have to drop prices in the recession, that it makes sense. If the demand goes lower, they can either sell less cars or they can lower the demand, but they or lower the prices. But they think it makes more sense to sell at basically break even than to not sell because they can always uh, make more money on the back end after people actually have cars with full self-driving. So it just makes sense there. He still thinks that they're going to be that Tesla will be the most valuable company in the world in less than five years or actually by 2027, he said. Now that's just his opinion, he said. But still, I think that's good that he's reiterating that. He says that the cognitive, the cognitive load for Twitter is much lower than people really think. It's much lower than Tesla and SpaceX. He says it's down to moderate right now, moderate cognitive load, and probably going to be low soon, maybe like next month. And they've gone past the phase where it was a very high cognitive load where he was just trying to cut costs to kind of stop the bleeding because they were at such a uh, burn rate that they could not sustain themselves. He says that the company itself is looking to buy back shares next year uh, just because they do see it at such a discounted price that they think that that would be a good use of cash. And he said he personally won't be selling any stock for a minimum of 18 months going to mid-2024, which I think is very bullish as well. They basically stopped the bleeding. He said in a previous uh, interview or in a previous space that he expects to be break-even next year at Twitter and he just has said here that he thinks that Tesla stock is at such a discount that that makes sense. He wouldn't want to sell for a while, right? So I think those were basically the key takeaways from the interview. Now, that was just in the beginning of the interview. He said all that stuff. So that, that was an hour-long interview, and we basically covered 20 minutes, but a lot of important stuff. Now, some, some rumors coming out today uh, that possibly Tesla China – have sold more than 100,000 units in December. Now, Gary Black, a big Tesla bull, says that's a big number of true. My December China sales plus exports is about 80,000. So if that is true, that would be quite bullish. And we also have the other factories ramping. Something else Elon talked about was uh, another uh, gigafactory 
announcement here soon that they're close to announcing that. And he didn't say this, but it's most likely going to be in Mexico. That's what a lot of people are saying right now. Now, I do, uh, I do want to say I'm very bullish on Tesla. A lot of people are, uh, I think, getting freaked out because it's falling so much. But you have to remember that you're buying a business. And a lot of short-term fund managers or a lot of fund managers in general are, are thinking short-term because they have to post numbers. They have to uh, get out of stocks that don't look good. So they, at the end of the year, they don't have to answer why they're holding so much of a stock that's down 60, 70%. Uh, they would rather just sell it, take the loss, and then not have to talk about that stock specifically or get backlash about Elon being too political and then holding it. Uh, so I think Tesla is still a great value. I still think that it is a great company to be buying for the long term it could fall further in the short term and right now it looks like it probably will continue because it just does that day after day but i am buying a company that i think is very attractively valued so i'm going to continue to do that now before we go any further i want to talk to you about today's show sponsor toon finance toon finance is a decentralized exchange platform designed by a team of market leaders and blockchain developers aiming to fix the externality that surrounds the p2e gaming demand by ensuring a P2E metaverse backed by SHA-256 encryption. Now, they have their pre-sale open. What they're going to try to do is allow you to trade NFTs, exchange cryptocurrencies, bridge blockchains all in one place, and they have this open on their website. Now, you can actually buy with Ethereum. This is such an interesting time for decentralized finance because of all the major exchanges that have gone down over the last year with FTX and a lot of these smaller ones as well. Uh, and with fears over Binance, I think there's definitely a lot of decentralized infrastructure that has to be built out. So if you want to check out Tune Finance, I'll leave links underneath the video. If you want to participate in their pre-sale, you can check out the links underneath the video as well. Of course, this isn't financial advice. You always have to do your research and pre-sales are typically pretty risky. So to know where Bitcoin's going in 2023, I think it's important to look at the previous drop. So we'll look at 2013 and 2017. We're not looking back at the first, uh, the first bull run just because it was so long ago. But here we had an 86% drop over about 400 days. Then we had 170% gain over the next 365 days. So a uh, pretty nice recovery from the bottom, but still not even close to getting back to where we were before. Still just a fraction, about one third of the peak price that we had back in 2013. Now moving on to the next bull run, we had something pretty similar in terms of drops. We had about a 84% drop over 360 days. So a little bit shorter time on the bear market there. But then we had it go sideways for several months. And then we actually had a 120% increase over the next 365 days. And that's from the bottom, of course. So another good return, but less than the cycle before. So if we take that to the next, uh, to the next cycle, what we just had. So far, we've had a 78% drop if we go to the bottom of just a few weeks ago. Now, that was about over 375 days. We could always... Go down further from here right if we hit a new bottom obviously that will change these numbers and there's a lot going on that we didn't have in the last cycle such as the war the fed increasing rates a possible recession and you can go through a lot more different instances of all these different exchanges going down but that has been something that's happened in the past too so i wouldn't hold that as an outlier but this is about how long a bear market typically is uh, from peak to the bottom peak to trough, and we have about the same amount of drop, just a, a few percentage short. Now, I want to run three different scenarios. One, if we continue on this path of lower and lower uh, increases or bounces from the bottom over 365 days. So we had 170%, then we had 120%. So the first one is a 70% increase from the bottom. That would be about $26,350 in the next year. So we would see Bitcoin's price go up about $10,000. I think a lot of us would be okay with that over the next year. Not a crazy hype cycle or anything like that, but just a slow recovery. Then we have a 120% bounce from the bottom if it's more like last cycle, which would be about $34,100. And then we have another one that is more like in 2013 where we have 170 percent bounce from the bottom so 41,850. now i if i had to guess which of it these it would be i'm assuming it would be closer to this bottom scenario maybe this middle scenario because we've been getting less of a decline every single year 
or every single bear market. So if we continue to see that, I would expect less of a bounce as well. And we could see this continue to happen as well just because the macro is looking so tough right now with so many companies going down in value as well. Remember then 2013 and even 2017, the market was recovering uh, or going up like the overall indices. Right now we're seeing stock after stock get crushed and the risk-free rate of return continue to go up. Now that could change in 2023, but a lot of people expect us to kind of head towards a recession in 2023 as well, because we're still getting pretty strong numbers from the economy right now. And the Fed has made it very clear that they want to crush the economy. So I think this is kind of where we could expect Bitcoin. And I know that's not the most glamorous scenario, right? $30,000 Bitcoin, $25,000 Bitcoin. Uh, but we might have it go up more than that in the meantime and then come back down or something like that. And of course, this is just an educated guess. We could fall down to, you know, 11000 or $12,000 next week, assuming, uh, you know, some bad black swans happen. So this is what I'm expecting in 2023. No blow off top or anything like that, but some excitement going for the for the having of Bitcoin and some people will definitely try to front run it in my opinion, especially if the economy is looking okay and it looks like we're maybe coming out of recession or maybe we haven't gone into it too hard uh, and there's still some money floating around or the Fed starts lowering rates or stops increasing them so aggressively. I would expect some people to get a little bit excited uh, about buying before the next halving. Something else I think we could see is Bitcoin's dominance go up over the next year. Typically, we do see dominance go up much higher than it has in this uh, bear market so far. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of cryptos blood against Bitcoin. A lot of the smaller cryptos that maybe haven't raised money recently probably ran out of runway. Like if you if they launched back in 2020 or 20 early 2021, they might run out of run right runway and then people sell and go into bitcoin a lot of the top 100 i would expect to kind of sell and go into bitcoin as well especially if we have any other big uh explosions in the crypto space or even recently right a weekend or two ago we had a lot of altcoins like four or five uh, drop 20 percent and i think that money funnels its way into bitcoin at some point let me know your thoughts on this underneath the video let me know if you want me to go over the top five cryptos to buy for 2023 and Definitely check out the links underneath the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.